Pulsary here with a knife video for you. And today we're taking a look at something really, really impressive. This is the Best Tech Ascot. Now, this knife is really cool for a couple of reasons. One, the, the big thing to me that stands out about this knife is this knife is not a super expensive knife. I think they're like 60 or 70 bucks, but it feels like it should cost $200. It really does. And if you handed this to someone and told them, you know, this is a two or $300 knife, I don't think anyone would question you. It feels so, so good in terms of just the fit and finish, the looks of it in general, the overall quality, you know, it's really, really nicely done. And the action is superb. It really is for a budget-ish knife. And I call it budget-ish because, you know, 70 bucks is, is a fair bit of money. But for a knife of its price point, it is one of the smoothest actions that I have felt. All right. I, I can't, nothing springs into my mind as being, you know, as good as this, especially in that price range. Uh, so, uh, really, really impressive knife. Great offering if you want, you know, some of that higher end feel, but you don't want the higher end price tag. I think this is a really, really nice offering from Best Tech for all of those reasons. The other thing is, it's a very standard, plain, safe design. And I wish Best Tech would do more knives like this. Uh, the one criticism, the two criticisms that I often have for Chinese manufacturers is one, they produce a ton of models so that it's hard to make, have one model that really stands out as special. Number two, they tend to be really out there. And I get they're trying to show off what their manufacturing prowess is and, and all the cool things they can do. But just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And in this case, Best Tech has done a fantastic job of giving us a really, really nice looking knife that is, is well balanced. It's got some nice details. I love that blue pivot, pivot collar. I love the handle material, and we'll talk about that as we work our way through. I love the blade grind, multi-directional grind there. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on, uh, but it's not over the top, which is sometimes I feel like best techs just get a little out there. Uh, size and weight on this, 8 and 3, 13 sixteenths overall, so a pretty big knife. 4 inches on the blade, 4 and 7 eighths on the handle, 4 and Four, uh, 4.5 ounces. I'm sorry. I don't know why I couldn't spit that out. And so uh, it's a definitely on the larger end of the spectrum. I could actually see, you know, an, an Ascot 2 or an Ascot Mini doing really well because I think this is a pretty popular design for Best Tech and I could see people being attracted to this but thinking it's just a little too big. If we could have one with a three inch blade or something, uh, that might be popular. Now, wouldn't be popular with me. I definitely like the larger stuff. But I can see how there might be people who would like to see that. Uh, let's go ahead and start working our way through the materials here and the features, starting with the blade, where we, which we always do. So up front, we have a satin polished, very fine satin finish here. Uh, not polished, but a satin finish, uh, multi-directional, and really, really looks sharp. I love the way that they've done just this very nice chamfer up here. Great plunge grind, really, really nicely done all around. I'm a huge, huge fan of this blade. Now it is D2 steel, so it's not super, super stainless, okay? Um, but the trade-off is you do get some pretty good performance out of D2 steel at a reasonable price point, okay? Um, and so, yeah, you're going to have to be a little bit careful with it. You know, don't don't leave it out. Don't get it wet and forget to dry it off. You're going to notice if you do that. But otherwise, really, really nice. Uh, very standard sort of drop point blade, which again is a really nice offering. And it's it's a pretty well balanced blade. It's not super, super. Notice, there we go. Notice how it's it's got a fine point, but it's not crazy fine. They've carried this extra material out toward the tip, which I definitely enjoy uh, and gives it just a little more, you know, makes it just feel a little more calm, makes me feel a little more confident when I'm carrying this, that I've got a pretty capable knife on my hands here. By the way, this was sent by Best Tech for review, so big thank you on that. Um, and so, yeah, overall, I'm quite impressed. The one little complaint I have about this blade, and it may or may not be visible on camera, in person, you can tell that there's just the slightest, slightest imbalance to the blade here. It's not significant. doesn't, of course, affect the use in any way. doesn't really affect the knife at all, and you would never know it unless you really, really look close. But there is just a slight difference in that une there's just a slightly uneven grind there. Um, uh, to me, not even, I mean, you know, if you're carrying and using this, you don't even know that, that that's a, a thing, 
but it is there if you really, really look. And it took me, you know, a couple of weeks before I realized, right? And, and so it's not obvious, but it, it, it's there. Okay, moving on to the action. So we have a flipper deployed liner lock knife here with a nice detent, very, very smooth. This is, you know, I've commented on the fact that Best Tech delivers about the best action you can get for a budget knife. And this is the nicest Best Tech I've felt. This is incredible. It's better than, you know, some of their even expensive titanium models. It's just really, really smooth. Very, very good. Uh, just hydraulic feeling. Now, you guys, I've talked about this before. This is very, very drop shut, but it's not... Um, a total guillotine where the blade just flies closed. And I don't really like that. So this is, is basically perfect, right? Where it's just a little bit of a shake and then it drops. I, it just feels so good every time you close this knife. It really does. Um, stop pin is internal. So I'll just show you this really quick. So let's see if we take a look as the blade moves. You can see the stop pin there moving to there and seats in the liners at the back. And in the close position does the same thing. This is a neat way of doing this. And I like the fact that it's open because you can kind of clean it out. Um, a lot of knives you'll see will have a, a sort of a track in there, sort of a smile cut into the liner, um, but it's often enclosed and it can be a little bit more difficult to clean stuff out of there in that case. But being open that way is kind of a nice touch so that it's just a little more maintainable over time. Of course, this is on bearing, so you're going to have to do some maintenance. Um, you're going to have to, you know, blow it out with forced air, put a little lubrication in there from time to time, or even put a cleaner and then lubrication in there from time to time. Most of the time, it's not going to be necessary to take it apart, but if you need to, you can do that. Uh, it's Torx construction. Liner lock here is very accessible. And this is another thing that, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm becoming old or <laughs> whatever the case may be, but I tend to care a lot more about how accessible the lock bar is and how easy it is to, to engage and how, you know, if I'm uncomfortable every time I go to close a knife, that, that wears on me pretty quickly. And this is quite nice. So it's, it's you know, the action, the lockup, the deployment, actuating the lock, and, uh, and just everything about this knife is done very well and very comfortably. Now, let's finally get to the handle construction where we can be a little more, or where we can zero in a little more on this material. So we've got a liner lock here, fairly thick stainless steel liners with this really, really cool material. And this is a carbon fiber G10 laminate where they've layered the pieces together and then milled it. So you end up with this really, really attractive pattern. And it is very attractive. I think uh, Best Tech was bragging about the fact that they were going to be the first ones to bring this to market. Now, being a Chinese company, very quickly, a number of other Chinese companies are copying this, which is par for the course. Okay. And so I believe the Civivi Insight, the Civivi Insight has this same material as an option. I don't think it's on all of them, but it's a, it is one of the options. We've got this big, nice blue pivot collar up here, which looks really, really attractive. And otherwise, it's a fairly plain handle. And, and I think that's key. If you had a bunch of milling here and lines going everywhere and all kinds of stuff, one, the, the material would not finish well, but two, it would be super, super distracting because this is already pretty fancy, okay? We've got a G10 backspacer with an integrated lanyard hole, single position pocket clip, and if you take a look inside there, you can see that that is milled out internally to cut down on the weight, which... Uh, it does with the knife coming in at, you know, 4.5 ounces instead of, I don't know, 5 or something like that. Um, so in terms of the handle construction, I'm really, really happy. The fit and finish is very good. Everything is clean. Everything is smooth. And the ergonomics are fantastic on this knife. Um, it, you know, the contoured G10 carbon fiber makes a difference. The extra thickness makes a difference. So this is just a really, really comfortable handle with no hotspots. The only ergonomic sort of point I would make here is these this jimping on the back spine is not doing anything at all right my thumb just slides freely now that's not a huge issue and it's actually pretty common on a lot of knives people there seems to be an emphasis these days on comfort and away from grip and so you don't see it very often where these are as sharp as maybe you'd like them to be or or as sharp as I would like them to be I will say this most of the time jimping that is as sharp as I would like it to be, you'll get other reviewers complaining about it. So my, my sensitivity for that is a little 
higher, I guess, or that is, or I don't have as much sensitivity to that as some other reviewers who you may watch. So yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of the handle. Let's go ahead and get some comparisons in here. First off, I want to throw in the Rat Model 1. Similar size, similar design with a high flat ground blade. Now the, the best tech is certainly bringing some, some nicer features to bear, and it definitely has a nicer feel to it overall. Um, and, and of course, I've got to say the best tech is quite a bit prettier as well. Uh, but this should give you an idea of size and in and functionality again is going to be, I would say, pretty similar. Um, now, already mentioned there is a pair of two, but I did already mention that I like to see um washers on knives that I, I think of as users, but uh the bearings here are going to, of course, make the action quite a bit different. Let's bring in one more comparison, and that is the new uh, Rake Model 875TZ. This is their new titanium model. And I brought it in because I find the, their actions feel kind of similar. The blade on the Bestec is a little heavier, but uh, another you know, overseas budget producer who has done a pretty good job giving some a nice action there. Uh, so. What do I think of this knife overall? Well, if you've been watching up to this point, you know I'm really, really impressed. This is, you know, it's comfortable in hand. It looks really, really nice. It definitely got to be one of the prettiest knives that Best Tech has come up with. Um, decent price point, exceptional build quality, fantastic action. So there's a lot to really, really like here. And I feel like this gives you a fancy knife, a knife that offers a little bit of, of flair, perhaps if you're into that and doesn't ask you to, to compromise a whole lot, doesn't ac ask you to sacrifice a whole lot to get that extra uh, little bit of attractiveness to it. All right, so there you go, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the link to White Mountain Knives down below where you can get one of these, and if you use my discount code SHARPSTUFF, you can save yourself 10%. Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.